Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. On a previous video I did, a lot of you had questions and comments down in the comment section about how to get Android TV onto a laptop or tablet now that that link is broken. So we're gonna go ahead and do that in this video, but real quick, I wanna do a quick follow-up on what's been going on with these projects, both Android x86 and Android x86 TV since that video. So we'll start with Android x86 TV. This was a fork of the Android x86 project that someone had done themselves. And they took down the site that I had the link for to monetize and start a discord for their own work, which I don't blame them. They put a lot of hard work and time into making it work on tablets and laptops as an Android TV alternative. And they wanted to get paid for that. The fee for it isn't very much, it's a nominal fee, but hey, here on the channel, we try to find options that are cheap or inexpensive, and that kind of doesn't flow with you know, the whole setup of the channel. We wanna try to use Android x86 moving forward now that the support for it has gotten a lot better. And that's what we're gonna install on this Intel Nook today. I also wanna use this Intel Nook for Android for some follow-up videos I wanna do on Tiny Cam Pro and how you can connect that with your Wise account and some of the other cloud-based subscription type cameras, along with your RTSP cameras you may already have to have one unified ecosystem. And even with this Nook, since it has HDMI and it's small, can be mounted behind the TV, you can use it as an alternative input to show your camera feeds in real time. But that's for the next video. Let's go ahead and get started with getting Android x86 on this and showing you guys how you can add a launcher that'll give you the feel of Android TV. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing you're going to do is search for Android x86, or you can go to android-x86.org and click on download. Once you get to the download page, you can either choose from OSDN or from False Hub. Either of these will take you to the more recent of the downloads for the Android x86 project. So it kind of doesn't matter which one you go to per se. So from here, you have the option of the Android x86 release or the CM release 14.1. We'll go ahead and run the CM 14.1 just for uh, the sake of the video. It's kind of up to you which one you want to run. The more re recent Android x86 release is 9.0. So for now, we'll go ahead and select version 14.1-R4 K19, which at the time of this video seems to be the more recent of the CM releases. And then from here, you're just going to select the download link and once this starts to download, make sure you have your bootable USB drive ready and a copy of Rufus, which we used on a previous video, installed and ready to go. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and switch over to Rufus, find your install file, and load it and hit start. So you have two different partition schemes. You can go with the MBR scheme or with the GPT scheme. MBR stands for Master Boot Record, and GPT stands for... GUI partition table. It's kind of to you which version you want to use. Uh, and it also kind of depends on what your computer may be capable of using. I just prefer GPT master boot record. Uh, you can lose everything in the table because it's all one unified table as far as the boot record. But we, we're not going to get too deep into that on this video. Once this ISO finishes, we'll be ready to load it into the laptop or PC and boot into the BIOS to boot this drive as the boot drive and start with loading the OS. Okay, so now that we have the ISO burned to this jump drive, you're gonna go ahead and stick that in the PC, plug in your power cord and whatever video card you're using for your monitor, and then your USB keyboard. From there, you can go ahead and boot up the computer. Once you get into the BIOS screen, you're gonna to wanna to Use whatever button it takes to get into your boot menu. And then from there, you're gonna obviously select the UEFI USB bootloader. So we're gonna go down to that and hit enter. And from there, it should take you into the GUI for installing Android x86. Right now we're running 9.0 R2 and you can use the regular installation, but I like to go to the advanced options and select install auto install to specify the hard disk. This will automatically 
find the hard disk and it's kind of a little bit easier than doing it the old manual way, which will tell you to select how big your partition is. But if you're doing a dual boot scenario, you may want to go with the standard setup. So we're going to let that marinate here. And then in a few seconds, we will be at the next screen and we select the hard disk that we want to use. So obviously we want to use the actual hard disk and not the removable media storage that we put in the computer. So we're going to hit enter. And it says you've chosen the auto installation. Basically it's saying it's going to erase the drive and install Android x86. And this is the last confirmation that you're going to get that you're erasing everything. So we're going to go ahead and hit yes. And now it formats the drive. Depending on if you're using an SSD or if you're using a standard drive, this could take a little while. We're using an SSD. And as you see, it's going to knock that out pretty quickly. And we move on to the next step here in a second. All right, now it's writing the OS to the drive. In a couple of seconds, we'll be ready to complete the installation. Okay, now that the installation is complete, we can go ahead and run Android x86. So we're gonna go ahead and hit enter, and it's gonna reboot. All right, so now that we've loaded into the Android OS, the rest of this is basically like setting up an Android phone or tablet. You're just gonna go through the prompts and we will resume here in a minute once we've gotten through all the prompts and got the initial setup done. Okay, so now that we've done the initial setup and we're into the main OS, we're just gonna go ahead and select one of the launchers. And then from here, we're gonna open the Play Store And we're going to search for Android TV launcher. So there's a basic and a pro version. You can use either one of them. Uh, the basic version is going to be just the base features. The pro version has a couple of other features that you guys may want to check out. So you can try the, the basic version since it's free and see if it has everything you need before switching to the pro version. So we're going to go ahead and wait for that to finish installing. All right, so now that it's finished installing, we're going to go ahead and launch ATV Launcher. And you can see we have most of our apps here. And we have a couple more that we're going to install here in a second. But for now, what we're going to do is hit the home button. And this will give us the option to select a different launcher. Hit the home button again. And then we select always. So now ATV launcher is going to be your launcher at, on a permanent basis, which will give you that Android TV feel. One of the big gifts and curses of this being and pure Android is that you can have the full app library, 
but with the caveat that some of the apps won't perform as they would on Android TV. For example, like uh, I have Comcast Xfinity. The Xfinity Stream app for the tablet is different from the one that you can get on like your Roku player. The benefit though is that currently Xfinity does not have a Android TV app that you can use. You have to have a Roku. So being able to use the tablet app is definitely a benefit, but you're gonna need an air mouse or something to navigate through the menu for the apps that are natively tablet set up and not set up for TV function. All right, so now we have a couple of apps installed and you can kind of see here how the interface resembles Android TV. So to add something, for example, to like your little favorites menu up here, you just select that and go down to ATV Launcher. Select Create and just select the app you want. We'll go ahead and put Xfinity Stream up there, hit Apply. And now that app's going to be at the top in like your favorites menu. So you can select that. And then from there, you would just log in like you basically would. So again, like I said, this isn't quite the same as the original APK, but it does give you some options and it gives you something that you can do to supplement what was existing if you guys want that Android TV feel with your PC. All right, everybody, hopefully this quick video helped a lot of you guys with the questions and comments you had. If you have any questions or comments following this, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section below. Make sure you like and subscribe. I have quite a few videos that I'll be dropping real soon on a couple of different projects, including me redoing my garage door and me getting a new GoPro. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you on the next one. Later.